All right, what is up, fellow geeks of YouTube? It is Mick here from the East Coast Geeks, and I'm starting a new series. I'm gonna keep. Uh, it's gonna be kind of a short series, but it's gonna be the on the operation and use of mech job and how it's used in different situations. Um, just in case anyone was curious on that. Um, I went ahead and just picked the Kerbal X, and I threw mech job on the side of it. And I'm just gonna go over the menu here real quick. I mean, edit windows. Um, you can change the mech job settings. You can check out your Delta V stats. And last but not least, shows your vessel info with your max acceleration, max thrust, vehicle mass, surface. So, yeah, surface thrust to weight ratio. So it's got a 2.10 thrust to weight uh, thrust to weight ratio. Excuse me. So, what we'll do now is we'll get into launch pad. And what this video is going to show you is how to utilize MechJab for takeoff and landing. This is on space plane guidance for my failed attempts at landing the space shuttle with MechJab. I'll go ahead and go to ascent guidance here. Now uh, this will show the path on MechJab. It's your engage autopilot. Uh, this is where you set your altitude, so I want to be at 100 kilometers above the surface. Uh, orbital inclination that changes which way you take off currently at zero let's find curb in here it'll match the uh, the axis of the moon if you want to change it like 90 this way uh, 180 this way and 270 that way I think I'm not I don't remember for sure I haven't messed with that in a while <clears throat> Prevent overheats is a must. If you don't like your rocket exploding, you can limit the terminal velocity. You can limit your acceleration, limit your throttle. Uh, corrective steering basically steers it for you. Auto stage is good if you have a lot of uh, if you have a lot of parts that are going to drop off at, during takeoff, and you can set the times there. Uh, and you can stop it at a certain stage if you like as well. And you've got auto warp and at a descent path, which lets you adjust that. I'm not going to adjust that, but We'll go ahead and go back to the launch screen, hit engage autopilot, and as you can see it throttles you up and everything like that, and we'll go ahead and launch. And I'll probably let it run throughout launch, um, just so you guys can see it, and once we get into orbit, we'll resume with landing. All right, now as you can see here, we are in orbit. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you landing guidance now. Let me double check you. Yeah, we are in a perfect, well, not perfect. We're about five meters off, but hey, good enough. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the landing guidance now. And this rocket actually has a lander built in. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna cycle the gear because it will not work unless you cycle the gear once. Uh, I don't think there's any lights on here, so that doesn't matter. But a couple ways we can do this here. You can enter the target coordinates exactly how you want them. You can pick a target on the map, uh, which I am actually going to do because I want to land at a place I've never really landed before. And it is that airport slash runway thing. If I can get my guidance over there. Is it that one or is it this one? No, I'm not 100% sure which one it's at. So we'll pick KSP pad and as you can see here, it automatically gets the coordinates down. Um, you can also show the predictions. Um, auto warp is like the auto warp on takeoff. Deploy landing gear automatically and parachutes automatically and you can adjust your landing speed here. Actually, no, we're going to land at the vehicle assembly building. 
So all you do then is hit land at target. And same thing here, I'm going to let it run just so you guys can see it. And once we're landed, um, I'll chime back in with a couple more words. Oh, one thing here, it does not auto stage. You have to manually do that and fire the engine. So, yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. Oh, right now the chute has deployed. We are 15, 14 now kilometers from the landing site. And according to the MacJab landing guidance, we're only three meters away from target. Um, and last time I tried this, put me right down onto the, actually that's the debris, I'm sorry. Um, it put me right down onto the helipad on top of the vehicle assembly building. So I'm going to go ahead and move that out of the way just so we can see a little better as landing happens. Um, but again, MacJob, I really recommend it if you have trouble with, you know, orbits and things like that. This is one of the simplest and easy ways to get a lot more experience, or to get a better experience with Kerbal Space Program itself. Um, I use it for a lot of flights. I use it for my space station buildings and trips to the moon and stuff. I have, I have done it manually before, um, but sometimes I just don't feel like doing the math. So, my landing gear should come down automatically. We will see here, though. Make sure that works. Oop, there it went automatically. So, shoot will deploy. And we're going to drift gently down onto the helipad. There it is. Engine's kicking in, giving us, slowing us down to the our target speed, which is 0.5 meters per second. Little lower, little lower. Parachute just disconnected, I think, due to lack of speed. And we have touchdown. So yeah, that is the basics of the takeoff or ascent guidance and descent guidance that comes with uh, MacJab and Kerbal Space Program. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. If you like this video, please hit the like button and feel free to subscribe. And that's pretty much it. You're going to see some more videos out of me. I think next I'm going to jump into the run, uh, how to dock and rendezvous with targets. And we'll even do a moon landing and stuff. So I really appreciate you guys watching. Have a great night.